What's up, Simonix? Welcome to a new tutorial on using social authentication within your Ionic application with Capacitor. Today, we will focus on the Google sign-in, uh, which is actually pretty easy from the code side, like two or three lines, but the configuration is a bit more tricky. If you're also interested in um, Apple authentication, uh, so Apple sign-in, you can also check out my other videos and also in combination with Firebase user authentication, check out my book, Practical Ionic. But now let's dive into this. So what I did so far, two, three, four, now you can also read it, um, is I started a blank new Ionic application with Capacitor and I installed the plugin for Capacitor Google authentication. Um, there's one thing that you need to make sure and that's setting your uh, bundle ID. You can also do this already with a start command, but I expect or I guess uh, you already have an application in which you want to integrate it. So always make sure that you get the right app ID inside your capacitor config.json file because this is something uh, you will need later when you submit it to uh, the iOS uh, App Store. Uh, you will also see it as a bundle ID inside the Google Play Store. And uh, changing this later after you edit the native project is actually a bit tricky. Um, for iOS, it's pretty easy to change it. For Android, you need to change it in a few places. So make sure that you get it right right now. Just pick something like com, your company, app name, and then you're fine. So let's heat on. Um, I already ran a first Ionic build. Um, so what you can do right now um, is simply run Ionic build and then add native platforms. You always need one build before adding the platforms. And then we can actually continue with Firebase because we need Firebase to connect it. Uh, we could also just directly use the Google APIs, but I feel like it's a bit easier using Firebase. So uh, create a new project or use your existing one and then add an application for Android and iOS. You can do this right from here or you can also go to your project settings and from here go to Android. Now we see we need our app ID. So let's copy it in. Let's just name this one Android app. Oh, let's just call it Simon's app. I actually don't know if I will see this anywhere. Now we need a signing certificate and that's what things get interesting. Um, first of all, there's usually already after you install the Android SDK, um, a file created at Android debug key store. And with this command, you can list out all the information. Um, what's the password? Um, yeah, that was the password. Okay, so usually the default password for that debug file is Android. Um, on my other machine, I actually just pressed enter and it worked. Um, so give Android a try, that should usually work. And then you should find the output for the SHA1, SHA1, what's it called in English? I don't know. But you will see it and you can put it in here. Then you can press register application. Uh, 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 yeah, that's great. So let me fix this. Of course, I had used that uh, already before to create this tutorial, but it should work for you in the first try. And then you can download the Google services JSON file and we can, yeah, well, not really open it like this, but open the browser. So um, find that file inside your browser and then you need to copy this file into your Android project. And you need to copy it to the very specific location, and let me rename it, uh, of Android slash app. So Android slash app, let's close this. Google services, JSON, boom, there we go. Now, within that file, you can find a lot of information about your OAuth client. Um, you can also find the right client ID in here, I think, which should be already this one. But sometimes you get multiple IDs in here and it's not super clear which one to use. And therefore, I always like to um, close this dialog and go to my Google API. So console developers, google.com slash APIs. And then from the credential screen, you can see your web client auto created by Google. And here you can find your client ID. You can simply copy it. It should actually be inside that file as well. It's just to make sure you actually pick the right ID. 
And with that ID, we need to do uh, a few tricky things. So let's close this and move into the strings file from our Android project. This is within Android app source main res uh, values strings. <laughs> so really a bit buried. And then we're gonna add a new string in here that we call server client ID. And we put in our string that we just copied before, hit save, and then we're already done with that file. Uh, we will need that key in other places as well. So what we can do right now is also go to our index.html, which, which is right in our source app folder. Um, actually, no, it's just in source. It's not even an app. And within here, uh, we can put it into the head block, or we actually need to put it here. Not like this, I just wanted to <laughs> paste this. Uh, what we need is exactly this one, um, Google sign in client ID and replace this once again with the right one that you just had. It always ends with apps.googleusercontent.com. Okay, we can close that one as well. Um, now we need a few more things for Android. Especially a problem that I um, uh, found was using or configuring the consent screen. I entered all my credentials, uh, I picked external, I entered all the credentials, but I couldn't really save it for whatever reason. And what in the end really fixed the issue <laughs> was just going to our Firebase project, authentication, sign in method, and then activate Google in here. Um, I really don't know why this fixes because right now we're not even using Firebase directly within our application, but now if I refresh that page, I will see, hopefully if it works this time, that the consent screen was set up. It's not verified yet, um, so for real application you might add some more information, but um, for testing at least it works right now. Uh, what else did I found out during my journey? Um, yeah, exactly. We have only used the debug um, fingerprint. So if you, in the end, create a real APK for Android, you have to add another fingerprint of the real key that you use to sign your APK. So that's really important. This is just the one we use while debugging and creating APKs locally. Um, so that's really important then. Um, now, another thing, if you want to also test out your functionality locally, which I guess you want to, is go into, okay, I did this maybe too fast, uh, inside your credentials, select the web client, um, so the ID where we copied it, and add another URI, and we pick localhost 8100, because that's the port where usually our Ionic application is served, and if you don't uh, edit in here, uh, you actually can't test it on localhost. So, uh, we've done actually most of the hard work already. Um, now we need to integrate the capacitor plugin, which we always do inside our main activities. So Android app source main Java, your bundle name, whatever, and then the main activity. And there are just two lines we need to add right now. First of all, import the actual capacitor plugin and then add that plugin within the init blocks. So Google auth.class. And that's all we need for Android. Actually, I think we're mostly done for Android now. Now, one more configuration step within our capacitor config. I'm not sure why this block isn't created automatically and if we actually need it, but I think this is recommended by the plugin. So you should specify which scopes are required for the Google Auth plugin and you once again need your server client ID that I somewhere left. So I guess I don't have it in my clipboard anywhere. Should be this ID hopefully, replaceme.apps.googleusercontent.com. Great, um, this was the preparation for Android. Now we also need to take a tiny few steps for iOS. We can go back to our projects, actually we are already in here, and click Add Application. This time we're going with an iOS application. Uh, because I forgot my ID, I got to copy it. So Simon's iOS app, uh, don't need the App Store ID right now. 
The only thing we need now is the file that we can download here, the Google Service Info plist. It's a slightly different. So before we had the Google Services uh, JSON, now it's a Google Service Info plist. And we need to bring that file to our native iOS project. And therefore, let's call mpx cap open iOS because we can't just drag it in our IDE. You really need to use Xcode for this. And what you do is you copy the file, you put it into the app folder, and you make sure that copy items, if needed, is selected. This will, if you use something with source control, you will see the changed files. This will really copy the file into our iOS project. And then we also need to add one more setting, which we can actually find from here. So within that file, what is wrong with you, Xcode? Uh, well, let's leave it like this. We need the reversed client ID. So copy the value from the reversed client ID and go to the info tab of your project, expand the URL types and paste the value into the URL schemes field. I'm not 100% sure that we need this, um, but I saw this before. I think it's recommended by the plugin. I think it's the callback scheme. Not super sure if it is used. If you're tricky, try it without and see if it's not working, then add it again. Um, but I think it's required. So the application is opened after the uh, Google Auth dialog. Now we are mostly ready, I would say. Um, we just need to use the plugin, which we haven't done at all so far. So let's move into our homepage TS and add two little imports. First of all, we need the import for the plugin that we installed. And then we also need the plugins from Capacitor because uh, it will actually be available within the plugins object. But for the web, we also need this import statement. Now let's go ahead, const Google user equals await plugins, um, Google auth dot sign in quite easy only one function right now it actually expects an options um is there any documentation about this no um so far we can just put in null um because i think you can specify stuff in here uh for the sign in um really not sure about some options but usually you don't need this and then you can just log out our uh, user so let's use the Google user and also let's set our user info to the Google user. So really just a bit of testing stuff. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the rest. Um, put a little button into your sign up, uh, into your homepage and a little card so we can show the information. So what the plugin does underneath is now call the real native Google uh, uh, login dialog. On the web, it will open a little pop-up on a real device. We can check it out uh, if you want to as well. Uh, it will really open this kind of native dialogue. So there's a tiny difference between opening a browser, which some uh, Cordova plugins in the past did. Um, since if you open a browser from your Ionic application, um, it will actually not have access to your passwords and um, you need to fill in all the details. If you really use this native plugin, which opens a native dialog, it's a lot more secure. Uh, you get access to the stored passwords and it's really a lot easier for the user. So let's try the sign in in our web first of all. And there we go. Project, whatever. Let's pick my mail. And there we go. User, email, whatever. All the information um, stored right here. So let's also take a look at it on a device. All right, here's the app on my device. Let's try the sign in. Once to use sign in. Okay, the native dialog comes up. I will pick my email um, and it actually works quite fast because I've gone through this before. Um, all the information is now right in here. And of course, uh, it was also locked somewhere on the console with the authentication code. Now, if you want to use this authentication within your application, um, that's of course not all. 
after you get back the authentication token, you really need to use this. You can easily do this with Firebase. Uh, you can create new credentials and use it directly for the Firebase authentication management and create new user objects or sign in existing users. But so far, that's everything for the Google authentication part inside your Ionic application with Capacitor. If you get any errors, uh, while running this, um, you can try to first of all empty your page cache or use the incognito mode. Uh, make sure that you edit your localhost URL for the credentials. Make sure that the OAuth consent screen is configured correctly. And if you still got any errors, try to Google it because um, this is really a tricky process. And if you just put one ID into the wrong place, uh, it gets really tricky. Once again, you can find all the code linked below the video uh, on my blog. And also, uh, if you want more about using Google Auth Fire Firebase authentication with Apple sign-in, check out the Practical Ionic book. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins, and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon. <laughs>